Hey, do I have a special surprise for you? How about a bonus episode here on Commando Demand? It is actually a full hour of my national radio show. I hope you like it. And stick around at the end of this hour. I'm going to give you a special discount promo code so you can actually try the whole Commando community for free for 30 days. you heard, but research is out this past week from Carnegie Mellon University that just about half of all Twitter accounts are tweeting about the coronavirus. It's all bots. The other half are Russian trolls. So the moral of the story, don't trust 99% of the coronavirus news that you see reported on Twitter. And in other news, Twitter has banned foreign spy as hate speech. I don't know if you heard about this. The new acceptable term is undocumented knowledge worker. And you see, ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls, just an example of all the fun that we have here week after week as we talk about living the best digital life ever. You can find the Kim Commando Show on 400 proud stations across the United States and around the globe on American Forces Network Radio. That's 177 different countries and every ship at sea gets the Kim Commando Show. And you can give me a call with all those digital questions. I'm sure you have at least one, two or 12 that I can lend a hand to. On our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line, that number is one 825 5254 is the way to join us. Once again, our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is one 825 5254 And I'll tell you, T-Mobile is just a fantastic company. I'm so proud to have them as a sponsor. So as you hear me talk about various products, various advertising products, I just want you to know that You know, they're not just advertisers because we take their money. They're advertisers because I believe in the product. I trust the product. I use the product. And so you can help us and support our small business by anytime you see us and you hear us talk about a particular company that you support everything that they're doing. And here's the deal. I'm so grateful that you're here with us. And if you just heard me say that, well, I was actually talking to you. And one of our great sponsors is Honey. I love Honey. Um, Honey is the free online shopping tool that automatically finds promo codes and applies them right to your cart. So easy to use. It installs in seconds. It's a browser extension. Plus, it's backed by PayPal. So, you know, it's secure. It's reliable. You get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash Kim. It's a special address, joinhoney.com slash Kim. I used Honey the other day to buy some hand sanitizer and some gloves. I saved 20%. I saved $36 just because Honey came in and said, Would you like me to apply some coupons? And I was like, "Um, yeah, that would be fantastic. Joinhoney.com slash Kim. All right, we're going to get started with five things that you need to know. And I scour the news every single day of the week, even on Saturday and Sunday, to make sure that you are always up to date. And first up, we're going to be talking about Apple and Google's contact tracing system, otherwise known as exposure notification. And it's inching a little bit closer to reality, it seems like, every single day. Now, just as a reminder, these two tech companies joined forces to develop a system that uses Bluetooth in your smartphones and randomized identifiers to determine if you've come in close contact with someone who has been diagnosed with COVID-19. And if you have, you're going to be alerted. So on Wednesday this past week, the first version of an API was made available to companies that are going to be developed the actual contact tracing apps. And it's not just here in the United States. More than 20 companies around the world are going to be using Google and Apple's API. So another piece is your smartphone. And if you have an iPhone, Apple just released iOS 13.5 this past week. And you can see the new option under settings and then privacy. And then it says um, COVID-19 notification system. Now, the biggest hurdle is actually getting people to use it. I've heard from so many folks already that say, you know, how can I opt out? I think this is too much big brother. I think it's too intrusive on my privacy. Um, About one in five people said that they would actually sign up for it. But if more people don't use it, it's just not going to work. Number two, Iceland is only a C away from Ireland. Whoa, why did she talk about Iceland? Well, come with me to Iceland for just a second. When the first person there tested positive for COVID-19 at the end of February, the government there began rolling out widespread testing and teams of contact tracers. Then it was followed by its own contact tracing app that it launched in the beginning of April. And it was supposed to make the whole process easier by using tracking phone GPS data. But here's the problem. Only 38% of the population have opted in to this tech-based contact tracing. And because of that, 
Iceland, the government says it hasn't really made a huge difference in any of the number of infections. Okay, fine. So we could just do it the old-fashioned way with real people. I'm talking about contact tracers who are going to call and let you know if you've been near someone with COVID-19. But there's a problem with that, too. The FTC just issued this major warning about scammers that are posing as contact tracers who will try to get you to turn over a lot of your sensitive information. You might get a text message with something to click on. Don't, because it's totally filled with malware. You're not going to get a link from real contact tracers. We've got uh, more information about this scam over on our website, of course, at commando.com. But the bottom line is don't let the scammers fool you. They're going to try to scare you to say that you've been exposed. But really, the only thing that they want you to expose is your bank account. Number three, what does Woodstock have to do with COVID-19? Huh? You might have seen this one across your social media feeds and so much misinformation is out there. It has been shared just thousands and thousands of times. The meme says, and I quote, in 1969, the Hong Kong virus, H3N2, killed over 1 million people worldwide and over 100,000 Americans. Instead of shutting everything down and ruining people's lives, they held Woodstock. All right, a couple of things. This whole thing started because of a narrative that was published at the beginning of May by the American Institute of Economic Research. Sounds legit, but it's not a government agency. Now, part of this is true. There was a pandemic around that time, but the narrative is totally misleading. It said that Woodstock happened in the middle of the pandemic. No, actually, the pandemic started the year before. It struck in seasonal waves during the winters of 1968 and 69. Now, Woodstock happened between the two waves, not during. It also said no schools had closed because of H3N2. Again, uh, no, almost half of all schools in the United States were closed at that time. Now, the death toll is right, but that was spread over a really long period. COVID-19 is much faster, obviously much deadlier. And so that piece has been updated a few times. The meme has been labeled misleading. Uh, Nonetheless, it's being shared as fact. And in other news, the... uh, The world's flat. That's right. All right. Number four. Is that an antibody test in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? Huh? The latest trend for online dating profiles to list your antibody test results along with your other attributes. So first to clarify, antibody tests are not the same as COVID-19 tests. Uh, The latter is determined if you actually have had the virus. Of course, antibody tests are determined if you've already had it. Past tense. And so that's what some of these dating profiles are saying, that they are now virus-free and safe to hook up with. But first of all, it hasn't really been proven that a positive antibody test means like you're totally immune to this virus and you can't be reinfected. And second, the whole issue of how do you know the person's just making this up and they're just lying to you? So without proof, anyone can say anything on their profile um, to say that they're a little hot and heavy for some social undistancing, of course. So just watch out for anything that says, I love long walks on the beach and I love flowers and rainbows and ponies. And oh, by the way, I have great antibodies. Great. Number five, excuse me, I have to take this call right now. Or that's what Ajura thought when it was okay, or he thought it was okay when during a recent trial in Texas. Like everything else, courts have been shut down due to the pandemic. But earlier this week, one court in Texas decided to try something new to hold a jury trial via Zoom that would be streamed live on YouTube. What could possibly go wrong with that? So the case deals with an insurance matter and was said to be a one day trial. So no big deal. But you have to pick a jury first. And this Zoom call begins with attorneys questioning 12 potential jurors while 14 others waited in a separate room. Okay, so we all have a get ready for and getting used to a new way of doing things, including civic duties. So after the first round of questioning, the judge spoke with the attorneys in a separate virtual room and came back to find that one of the jury candidates was not in front of his webcam. Instead, he could be heard talking on the phone. The judge tried to call him back, but he left his headphones connected to his computer. And he finally came back, but only after the 12 jurors were picked. Now... I guess that's one way of getting picked for jury duty, but why skip this time? Because this could be the only time in your life that you could perform your civic duty and do jury duty while, you know, not wearing pants or in your pajamas.
All right, coming up in this hour, it's a big Memorial Day weekend, and so glad that you're spending part of yours with us. And we have a free offer that you're not going to want to miss. It's from one of the big ancestry sites and the genealogy sites so that you can look up your ancestries, and it's going to be pretty fun to do. Um, and then later on this hour, we have our digital life hack. And I put together five clever tricks so that you look fabulous on those Zoom calls because about now you're like, all right, I know I could be doing better than this. And, of course, we have all of your phone calls here on this Coast to Coast broadcast of the Kim Commando Show. When data breaches and scams happen, you need to know fast. That's why I send out breaking news alerts you can get for free at commando.com slash subscribe. This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV, the Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. Hey, our T-Mobile Unlimited listener lines open. Love to hear from you. one 825 5254 is the way to join us. And just a quick reminder is that if you'd like to schedule a time to speak with me here on the show, really easy to do. Just head over to our website. That's commando.com, of course. And over on the right-hand side, there's a link that says Be a Caller. Just fill that out. And Manny, our showrunner producer, will get back with you and we'll schedule you right in. All right, by now you've heard of ransomware attacks that take over computers of people and big businesses and small businesses and hospitals and cities and towns and government agencies and just about anywhere else that you can think of. And uh, ransomware attacks are up 41% over the last year. Criminals plant malicious software that encrypts all the files on the victim's computers unless the victim has a backup. You know, we talk about that. Uh, the victim also has to pay the criminal money in Bitcoin to get the files back, hence where the term ransomware comes into play. But what if you didn't have to pay the ransom or have the money to pay even if you wanted to pay? I mean, even the FBI has said at times, you know, you might want to pay this. And about 70 percent of the people actually will pay to get their files back. And that's where this knight in shining software armor just swoops in. A young, amazing man by the name of Michael Gillespie swoops in to help you. Uh, there are about a thousand different types of ransomware out there. And Michael works at night and his days off to come up with software that lets you off the hook. Now, here's the deal. Michael's decryption tools are free. That's right. You don't even have to pay for these tools. Uh, Michael, such a pleasure to have you here on the Kim Commando Show listener line. Um, what's the biggest change that you've seen in ransomware since you started out, I guess, as our nation's Clark Kent? <laughs> Happy to be here. So um, probably the biggest thing I've seen in the last few years, especially, has been a big shift. Um, for better or for worse, um, the bad guys are really going hardcore after businesses. Um before it was just a wild west back in you know between 2013 and 2016 when ransomware was really getting in there and I was getting involved and it was just anyone and everyone you know lowest hanging fruit gets gets hit whether it's right. a home home person or you know a business but now they're the last two years especially they've been shifting to really hitting big target businesses governments um, and can, then they're well, they can also make more, more money creative there. I mean they yeah, can make definitely. more money off of that instead of Say, uh, what is the average home? Is it like 300 Bitcoin or is it more than that now? 300 Bitcoin is a bit. Um, three, maybe $300. Oh, $300. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I get it mixed up too. Um, I mean, yeah, most of the ones that target home users are between 300 maybe $1,200. Um, and then, of course, you see the businesses, they could get, you know, hit up for between 3000 to, I, I just saw a, like a 30, like you know, close to six digit numbers. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's getting crazy. Well, you know, if a hospital gets hit, I mean, you know, they don't have, to have a lot of choices in some businesses and governments. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, you know, so what are we going to do to get our files back? So it used to be, and maybe it's still the case, Michael, where you'd get a phishing email and you'd click on it or somebody would send in like an extortion type email to say, you know, everything's going to be locked down unless you pay us. And because we saw you on a video webcam or what have you. Um, is it still hitting businesses and consumers that way? Yeah, definitely. That is a very large, uh, 
part of how a lot of businesses get kind of compromised in the first place is those phishing emails. Um, it's, you know, it's still the weakest link. It's easier for, you know, targeting something that where somewhere in HR just opens a word document and it just, it just gets the first foothold into their network. And then it just goes from there. So how difficult is it to figure out how to decrypt the encryption without having to pay them the money to, to get the unlock key? How long does it take um, you? That, yeah, that, that of course really varies. And of course the, I have to put the disclaimer, I can't decrypt everything. You know, it's, it, it's always reliant on the criminals making a mistake. Um, whether it's they don't use very good cryptography, they don't use it correctly, they don't use it at all. <laughs> um, had several instances of that. So, I mean, I've had I've had some ransomware that I've br- from the time I get a hold of it and test it out to actually releasing a tool could be 10 minutes if it's like a really, wow. really stupid mistake. <laughs> You know what? That's amazing. And then you have all these tools that people, we're, we're, we're going to link to them over at commando.com. Uh, but you have all these tools that are for free. And I read that you're, you and your young wife, that you live in a, a modest two-bedroom home that you purchased for $116,000. Why don't you charge for any of these tools? I mean, even if it was 5 or $10? Um, pretty much, I believe that everyone should have access to such tools if it's feasible. I mean, there's, there's cases where I do have to have it behind a company I work with if it's like a more intricate working, but for like home users, I do help for free just out of moral principle. I don't want to take advantage of those being taken advantage of already. Oh, that's so nice of you. So what kind of, what advice do you have for someone who does get hit with ransomware? What should they do first? I would say first thing is as cliche as it sounds, don't panic. (laughs) Don't freak out. Um, yeah, because the number one, probably the two biggest mistakes that people can make when they get hit by ransomware, one is freaking out and just shutting everything off and deleting everything. Um, cause if you delete the, you know, you, you, your intuition is I got hit by malware. I want to delete the malware and they run antivirus scans and delete it. Well, sometimes that makes it harder for me to figure out whether I might've been able to help. Maybe that malware had you know, I have to be able to look at it. The doctor has to know what you drank from under the sink to know whether he can help you. <laughs> you know, exactly. Uh, and um, thank you so much for joining us, Michael. You're doing such incredible work. Uh, keep it up. You're very appreciated. And we're so glad that you're here again. We're going to put links to Michael's tools over at our website at commando.com. Hey, listen, if you're tired of expensive toner cartridges, meet the Epson EcoTank Pro. It's cartridge free, designed for high volume printing. Epson's fastest super tank printer has a supersized, easy to fill ink tanks. Add the Epson Eco Tank Pro to your online shopping list at Epson Dell Micro Center and at Epson.com slash Eco Tank Kim. From coast to coast, over 400 stations strong. Your source for everything digital. This is the Kim Commando Show. And speaking of military and Memorial Day weekend, uh, to recognize Memorial Day and the upcoming 75th anniversary of the war's end, Ancestry.com is opening up access to its digitized collections of records for free this weekend. So you can search for your relatives' draft cards, other reports from that time. And many of those documents would be actually in their own handwriting, so it's very cool. Um, Definitely puts things into perspective, a time when Americans were asked to risk their lives thousands and thousands of miles away from home. Uh, maybe being asked to stay home and occasionally put on a face mask really isn't all that bad in comparison. All right, got to tell you one little thing before we go back to all of your great phone calls. There's a really important update to Google's Chrome browser. Um, the reason why I bring it up is it's a little bit techy, but I think you can get it. As you look at a browser, you already know that if you see HTTPS in the browser bar, it means that you're visiting a web address that encrypts a large part of your traffic. You know, it's secure, but it doesn't keep your ISP and other networks from seeing all the sites that you visit. Well, now there's something called DOH, D-O-H. I don't know if you've heard about this. It's called DNS over HTTPS. It rolls out this week as part of Chrome uh, version 83. And basically, uh, without getting overly complicated, when you visit a website, the browser has to look up the actual digital address for that site, which is a set of numbers. 
And that's short for the domain name system or DNS. Now, HTTPS traffic might be encrypted, but the lookups aren't. And that's where Doe puts a stop to it. We have more information about how it works and the update that you need uh, over at commando.com. We have our digital life hack just moments away. Carol in Athens, Georgia is up next. Hi there, Carol. Hey, Kim. I am so excited to talk to you. I can't believe it. Oh, you're <laughs> here. Thank you. I have listened to you forever, and I never thought I would get to talk to you, so I am so excited. And I have to tell you something real quick. Yes. Until I did my inquiry, I never knew what you look like. You know, I had a picture of you in my mind's eye. You are so pretty. You are not a nerd at all. So, so well, thank you. You're so complimentary. Thank you for that. Um, so what did you, what, okay, so what did you think I looked like? You think it was like, like, you know, tall, dark a hair? A nerd, just, you know, brown, a bob, brown hair, <laughs> bang, you know, a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, well, thank you for finally visiting you're our not, website. You're so pretty. You're so pretty. Well, thank you. So um, what's going on, Carol? Okay. I'm going to try and make this quick. I have 27 years experience as a mainframe programmer. I programmed in COBOL and assembler language. Wow. I, you know what? You were on the <laughs> forefront. Thank you. That's what I'm hoping. I, but, 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 I have been out of the field for a while. And you know that even if you're out of the field for an hour, you become a dinosaur. Your skills are obsolete. Yeah, it <laughs> so, happens. So, yeah. So, I do not know the new languages like Java and um, um, object oriented. But, or Ruby or whatever it is. Okay, but okay. you know COBOL. And let me tell you, I do. COBOL is a great skill to have right now at this moment. Um, That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, believe it or not, common business-oriented language. I remember learning COBOL in college with the pick statements. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm a nerd. I miss it. I want to get back into programming so bad. Well, and you can. Um because there has been a call out for people who okay. are COBOL programmers to come out okay. and help. Because, see, a lot of the state's unemployment systems, which, you know, are going crazy right now with the pandemic, uh, were actually written on, in COBOL. And they're okay. trying to find people that can actually That's go to work. what I was going to ask you. I had heard that because of the coronavirus, a lot of companies, maybe not a lot, but some, were having to go back to update their old mainframe systems. And I wanted to know if that was true. And I wanted to know if that was true, if you knew how I could get my foot in the door, even though I don't know, you know, the Java and the... No, you can still do it. Uh, so, we, we actually, <laughs> we had a guy on the show not too long ago. Uh, by His name was Bill Henshaw. And he has an outfit out of Plainville, Texas, Plainview, Texas, pardon me. And, okay, I'm writing it down. <laughs> uh, and he's 78 years old and he has. I'm not that old. I'm uh, not that old. <laughs> well, he, well, I think it's great, though, that and he's rounded up about 350 IT professionals who are COBOL programmers. <laughs> and he gives them jobs. And um, the name of his outfit is the COBOL Cowboys. Oh my gosh. Okay. Hey, so I could go anywhere because my son's grown and my husband's in heaven and um you know, I can go wherever. <laughs> well, now you're up for an adventure. Now, you know, so give Bill a call and or send him an email. Tell him that you and I spoke, by the way. Uh okay. and uh, again, he cuz he'll remember being on the show. And then but you can also check you know, locally, what's happening with maybe on dice.com. I don't know if you never look there. Uh, I do, but the thing is, I'm sorry, I, I am interrupting you. No, the that's thing okay. Is they all want, yes, they want COBOL, um, but they want everything else. Okay. You know, well, then. I don't know. Okay, then, Carol. So you, they say they want, that's what they say they well, want. Well, you know what? So if you've gone to Dice and LinkedIn and Indeed and, you know, all the others, and uh, then, you know what? Try the COBOL Cowboys with Bill. And I'm okay. going to put you on hold because Mandy may even have, still have his web address and uh, some contact information for Bill. And it's an interesting time, isn't it? I mean, never would you have thought that a language that you used in the 60s and 70s and maybe into the 80s would suddenly come back and be in demand simply because 
the young people don't know how to fix it. So they're relying on people who have done this their entire lives to come in and kind of save the day. And uh, Bill was quite the character. I remember talking to him. It was really amazing. Uh, Carol, do me a favor, since now you've talked to me and you've talked to everybody here on the show, I want you to make sure that you keep us posted about how you became a COBOL cowgirl. All right, it's time now for our digital life hack. Five clever tricks to look great on your Zoom calls, okay? You've been, like, just kind of poking along. It's time for you to up your ante. And number one, it's all about the lighting. We're going to tell you the best lights. I went on Amazon and I picked out the lights. Ring lights, they work the best. Uh, YouTube celebrities, video bloggers use it. Uh, But what I like is one particular ring light, which you can see in this tip, that has three different color temperatures. And so you can play around and see which one looks best for your room, your skin tone, and the camera. It also includes a built-in phone stand, so you can use it for filming or stabilizing your shots or making sure that the the phone doesn't move when you're actually on that video call. Uh, You also want to find your angle. You have to see which angles that you look best on camera. Um, The same principles that apply for photography work for video, too. Nobody looks good when the shot is from a low angle that looks right up your nose. So start with your camera just above eye level. Uh, And we're also going to tell you how you can position your screen just a little bit further back, how to prop it up. We're going to give you all kinds of tips. There's a heavy-duty stand that includes an adjustable tripod and mount that can position your phone a different types of ways. There's also a remote. It's really handy. I also want you to do a background check. What's behind you? If you have bookshelves, cabinets, you know, clean them up, spruce it up, put some really smart looking books behind you. So we go like, wow, he's reading War and Peace again? Yes. Now, if you don't have a good background, I found some 3D adhesive wallpapers that will give you like that brick look or that wood look behind you as well as there's a drop cloth that you can also use as well. Number four is dress for success, okay? I don't want you to wear something with a lot of patterns or some weird colors. I want you to look great. So I went on Amazon, and I found for you ladies out there a $20 shirt that has 5% spandex, which means you can move around in it, and it comes in all kinds of sizes from extra small to 3X, and again, only $20, comes in all kinds of great colors. And for men... I found you a similar shirt, and for the men, it's wrinkle-free. Okay, so this way you never iron it. Uh, Number five is I want you to check yourself before you wreck yourself. What that means is, you know, make sure you look good, check the lights before you turn the camera on. We've got all kinds of links free for the taking. Look no further than the official homepage of the Kim Commando Show. That's K-O-M-A-N-D-O dot com. And once you're there, hit Kim's show right on the homepage. Uh, Still to come this hour, we have some great tips you don't want to miss, including one that's about a scam that's spreading all throughout the Internet. I don't want you to fall for it. You're on the Kim Commando Show. If you have an in-depth technical problem that's just too much for the show, I still want to help. Use the Commando forums to get your answer. Use promo code Kim to get 30 days free at GetKim.com. All right, so far the coronavirus has been linked to 5G. Uh, Bill Gates started it to thin the population. Government labs were in the middle of it. And it's the end of the world as foretold in the Bible, especially this week. I don't know if you heard, but coronavirus-shaped hail fell from the sky. All right, social media brings out the best in everyone. Not. And people who have fringe thoughts and spread conspiracy theories are going to find people who think like they do and believe what they do on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. They don't try to monitor and they try to yank the content down. But typically it doesn't happen until this conspiracy theory just starts spreading like crazy. Well, joining us here on the Kim Commando Show listener line is Joe Andre from the UK. He's a senior researcher at Logically and he's very well known throughout the world. And he's been following all of these coronavirus conspiracy theories. And Joe, it's so good to have you here. Great to be here. (laughs) Uh, Appreciate you on board with us. So how exactly do these conspiracy theories start? Um, It's kind of a big question. Uh, A lot of the ones around coronavirus, they've usually got some some link to a previously existing conspiracy theory. So uh, 5G is probably the uh, best example here. You know, that that leads back to ideas around electro smog and uh, 
previously sort of scientifically dubious or debunked theories around electromagnetic hypersensitivity and these people who say they're allergic to Wi-Fi, that right. kind of thing. So there's this there's this um, foundation that these things then build up on and 5G essentially being you know, the next level of this coming out around the same time as a pandemic, people start to put two and two together and because it's an uncertain time, you know, it then gets run with. And it's a similar story for these other um, conspiracies and the other strands around coronavirus as well. And then you also have the pandemic video. Well, I mean, oh yes, of I, course. I mean, I just wrote a little bit about it on our website to say, you know, stop sharing it, and I just got mm. flooded with like nasty email, like saying you don't know what you're talking about. The pandemic video is a hundred percent real. It's right, and I'm like, you know, I, I have a tendency not to engage. Uh, yeah, because if you engage, you just kind of like fuel some fire for it. Um, what you are some? Don't see the troll. Yes, exactly. Um, what are some new conspiracies that you've been seeing? Uh, I mean, the the pandemic documentary is a, an interesting development. Um, it's, it's a lot less heightened or a lot less sort of fantastic than the other ones. Um, it's based around a lot. That uh, Judy Mikovits uh, brings to the table here a lot of stuff around the organisation of different uh, health care organisations and uh, different health committees that the the average person isn't going to know about. So the fact that the language is a bit more demystified brings brings that in there and uh, lends it that level of credibility, which you know, which, when you look into it a little bit more, you you see isn't necessarily there. Um, but it's. These are things that are gaining traction right now. Um, so 5G, I think more and more companies are starting to try and combat that and start to put it to bed. Uh, the Bill Gates thing is it's still going strong, and uh, so is Poor pandemic at the moment. Yeah, I, just, I know. <laughs> I feel sorry for him. I'm like, you know what? The guy's just trying to help. Okay, he's not trying to thin the population. Really, it's not happening. Um, what about the government labs conspiracy theories? What do you see with that? So that's quite interesting. There are a couple of different um, strands there. Um, there was one that came right out of the starting block um, when the pandemic was declared and it became a little more serious than the World Health Organization were getting involved, um, that uh, a site called Zero had shared and really blew up across Twitter and across the internet. And this was the idea that there was this um, absolutely cinematic plot by the Wuhan laboratory to steal um, a sample of um, SARS and modify it and turn it into coronavirus. And it was this bioweapon that had been released. Um, Now, we were able to trace that um, back to uh, a little known uh, blog page called Great Game India, um, who had basically put this together from scraps of uh, research and scraps of different um, fringe news outlets and constructed this narrative out of nowhere. Um, but what was interesting about that is that because that was a single narrative that they had pushed and then got further, it was a lot easier to debunk that. There was a, a the heart of the beast. There was this one blog, and you could say, okay, it's come from here. They've got some shady roots, and uh, you could uh, really put that one to bed. However, now the accusations of labs here and labs there has become a, um, a sort of think about geopolitics. Um, and now you've got um, the American government uh, starting to talk about and speculate about uh, lab safety, and then it becomes a lot less clear about where it has come from. And, and, you know, and that's, a, that's an interesting point, because it seems to then take a whole life of its own. Um, Joe, thank you so much for joining us and giving us some clarity on what's happening with these conspiracy theories online. So it's Memorial Day weekend. If you're going to be traveling around, I want you to make sure that you know if there are any road restrictions. And there's a new map developed by AAA and ESRI that will tell you any type of road restrictions that are happening throughout the country. We have a link to it at commando.com. And stay right where you are. We have another hour coming up here on the Westar Multimedia Network. So how many things did you learn in the last hour? I bet it's at least one, two, or maybe even ten. And you know you can trust what you hear and learn on my national radio show. We work so hard at that. But here's that special bonus I promised. How about 30 days free of the Commando community? You get it all. You get 30 days free when you sign up, but you have to use promo discount code KIM. So to do that, 
go to this special web address, getkim.com. Once again, that's getkim.com and use that discount code Kim because you're going to get 30 days free and I'll see you in the commando community. And thanks so much for your support.